I try to uh, present to you a picture of the uh, region in turbulence as it is uh, now, and where we in Israel fit in or just try to fit in. The main thing is a new feature in the region is the failure, complete failure, of what was known to be the war on terror. It's not over, it's been going for over, uh, well over a decade, but when we take a look at the map of the region now, it went bankrupt. And that's very important from an Israeli point of view. Because when what we see, and for example, is a big black hole in the midst of the region. Think about the map of the Middle East from the western outskirts of Baghdad, capital of Iraq, and the Tigris River. 500 miles to the west all the way to the upstream Euphrates River in northeastern Syria. Okay. Nobody in control. Two rival factions of Al-Qaeda, one which is known by the uh, ISIS, the Islamic uh, State of uh, Iraq and the Levant. The other knows, uh, known as the JN. Jabhat al Nusra, the Nusra Front, they are fighting each other infrequently. One doesn't uh, accept the uh, supremacy of the Al Qaeda central leader, Ahmad Zawahiri, somewhere in the mountains between Afghanistan and Pakistan. But they are full Al Qaeda loyalists, both of them. So imagine. 500 mile stretch, huge area, mostly area, yes, but important, and they are in charge. And the Iraqi army, as we speak now, is at the gates of a city called Fallujah, maybe sometimes mentioned in the Australian press, a city which used to have 300,000 inhabitants, not a big city in Iraqi. Uh, standards, the second Iraqi division, the seventh Iraqi division, the golden division, the elite special forces division of the Iraqi army at the gates of Fallujah. Fallujah is controlled by Al Qaeda, they don't dare move in. And I doubt they will. On the Euphrates in Syria, the uh, capital of the that governorate, the city of Raqqa, has become the capital of an Islamic emirate run by Al Qaeda with Sharia laws being imposed on everybody. Mm -hmm. And the black banners all over the place. Uh, Al Qaeda. This same ISIS I just, just mentioned, this is the organization which doesn't accept the leadership of Al Qaeda Central for their own ideological differences. ISIS is already in the Sinai Peninsula, in Egypt. They are there, we know they are there, they acknowledge that they are there by the thousands. Southern Libya, liberated with the uh, uh, with President Obama leading from behind, as they say. The whole Southern Libya is now integrated through different militias, maybe tribal militias, which have adopted Al Qaeda style doctrines. They are now integrated in the terrorist system running all the way through Algeria to Mali, Mauritania, what is known as the Sahel, the coast of North Africa. 
reaching the point where the French had to send the army to Mali to save Mali from becoming another Islamic empire. They saved only half of Mali. That's the situation. Uh, that's the main thing happening in the Middle East. Now, from an Israeli point of view, I was saying to you, I think, last year, that the uh, chapter of 40 glorious years in which the Arab states abstained by decision, abstained from getting involved in any direct military pressure in Israel, I think, I said to you last year, that was over. That was over because the Arab states are becoming, to, in, to different degrees, failed states, all of them, including those that did not experience the Arab Spring yet. And because they are becoming to different degrees failed states, they are losing control over the borders. So when we look at this situation, the resurgence of Al-Qaeda after more than a decade of the war on terror, We have to do a few things about it. I'll go to Syria first. In Syria, our main worry is that there will be a leakage, a spillover of the Al Qaeda organizations to organizations down south, close to our border on the Gulf, and close to the Jordanian border along the Abu River. Now that's a real threat, because Al-Qaeda, for example today, is in charge, uh, uh, in control of about half the city of Aleppo, the biggest city in Syria. And the Syrian army today, those fighting for Assad, is less than a third of what the Syrian army used to be. They are overstretched. They are exhausted. They manage to maintain control over the main artery of the country, controlling about 70% of the territory only, which goes, runs along basically one highway, which is called the M5 highway from south to north. But no more. The Syrian army is unable to mount significant uh, counter-offensive against the rebels. The rebels are unable to defeat what remains of the Syrian army. We have a so very bloody statement, a really quick one, where Syria is being uh, broken into many, many pieces with about 1,000 different rebel militias. The biggest of them being the two Al-Qaeda uh, organizations, numbering together 50,000 people under arms. Significant force. What, there is nothing to prevent them from coming down. Down south, close to our home. So Israel has initiated a program which so far, for example, brought for medical treatment in Israeli hospitals, Haifa, Safa, and in a special military hospital that the IDF has uh, established on the Golan Heights, uh, 700 uh, wounded, injured rebels, uh, sick, uh, women who have to give birth, etc., all being treated to Israel and then uh, going back to Syria. 700 of them. So far, the number has been broken. One should be allowed to assume, just assume, that if such 
an operation is going flawlessly, I mean the medical evacuation and treatment, etc., one is not, would not be wrong to assume that there is a good system of communications in place between Israel and the rebels next door, I'd say a word about them next door, and that uh, this system of communications which allows for the evacuation of the wounded and injured and sick uh, also allows to do some other things together. Now in southern Syria we share an interest with Jordan. Neither King Abdullah of Jordan nor we would like of course to see Al-Qaeda across the frontier. So one is allowed to assume that there is a possibly significant amount of cooperation and coordination going on between Israel and Jordan in order to at least slow down but hopefully prevent the flow of Al-Qaeda fighters from northern Syria down south. We and the Jordanians and others, in Amman for example there is a, an operations room where the Saudis are involved, Prince Banda's people, uh, is the chief of uh, Saudi uh, intelligence and others, and the Americans are there, not doing very much but they are present and they know what's going on. Uh, a lot of my prognosis is that if there is to be a decision in the three-year-old Syrian civil war, it will come from the south and not from the north, as everybody thinks. That would be an effort, because from the south, the distance between our border, the Jordanian border, and the capital, Damascus, is 100 kilometers. It's a leap if you get the necessary force ready, deployed, trained, quick, etc. The rebel militias south of Damascus, between Damascus, our border, and the Jordanian border, are mainly local militias based on the local villages and town townlets led by young, some of them very impressive uh, young uh, guys, who, unlike northern Syria, accept the leadership of the civilian elders. And they do not belong to Islamist organizations. Just before uh, we took the plane to come here, 49 different rebel militias in the south have announced that they are unifying under a single command. Very positive development, very important. It doesn't happen by itself. Because villagers from the different villages and hamlets there are not necessarily in love with each other. And not for political reasons. All sorts of historical and traditional different ethnicities there, etc. Different sects, etc. Must have taken somebody an effort to reach this point where the Form 49 uh, groups have unified. So far, we have a small presence of Jamaat al-Nusra, of the Nusra Front, one of the Al-Qaeda organizations, down at the southern point of the Golan frontier. They are small, they are very careful not to provoke Israel. Uh, and so far, this effort has yielded a minimal presence of Al-Qaeda uh, in, the, in the region. Of course, Israel would like 
to kick it this way. It goes without saying, and I know I've been saying this before here because I say it everywhere I go. It goes without saying, from an Israeli point of view, we want Assad out. We don't get involved in the Syrian civil war. Whatever you assume, you assume. But we want Assad out. The devil we know is worse than the devil we don't know. And since I'm not a government official, I'm saying, even if it is a cut. is difficult. We have experience throughout our history of dealing with irregular organizations, whatever their doctrine and ideology. PLO, Hamas, Hezbollah, they are no better. And we may have to deal with Al Qaeda and Syria. I hope the Americans will do something and provide the necessary equipment, mainly anti-tank and anti-aircraft uh, missiles, to the right groups of rebels. I hope they do that. So far, they don't. Whatever you read, they don't. Uh, we prefer this uh, uh, risk, taking this risk, to having a guy who tried to develop a, a nuclear bomb until he was bombed by uh, Israel. We prefer that to a guy who provided uh, Hezbollah with almost every single missile that was fired into Israel in the 06 war. We prefer that to uh, a guy who is in bed with Iran. That's the view from Israel. 